you can't know just by looking at something whether or not it has a lot of carbon associated with it. And these labels give you that information. Then you can choose whether or not to act on that information. This is not just about consumer choices. Uh, research shows that when a firm begins to study where the carbon is coming from in its supply chain, it will often find efficiencies in the supply chain it didn't know existed. And so what we find is that there are often large cost savings that might be available when firms start trying to figure out where does the carbon come from in, in the various products I'm selling. So in many cases, the change that will occur because of carbon labels is only in part because of changes in consumer behavior. Equally important is what happens within a firm, within a company, when it starts thinking about carbon as something that's important. And for many companies, they will find that there are energy efficiency savings there, which mean cost savings, and they will begin to act in part because they want to provide consumers what they want, and in part because it's simply cheaper for them to operate. Now, why do we care about carbon? Uh, carbon acts like uh, a greenhouse in the atmosphere. What it does is it allows the light to come into the earth, but it traps the heat. And that's been something that's been known for 100 years or more. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The question is, uh, how much carbon can we have in the atmosphere without heating the Earth up more than we want it to? And by now, more than 98% of climate scientists have concluded that we need to bring those numbers down quite a bit, that humans, by releasing carbon in the atmosphere, are causing what's called anthropogenic climate change. That's human-caused climate change. Um, how much do we need to reduce carbon? Probably 20% um, or so within the next decade, and then 50 to 80% by 2050. What happens if we don't? Um, there is a risk that we will get to a point where the temperatures will be high enough to cause major shifts in where you can grow crops, changes in sea level, and that these kinds of changes will be essentially irreversible. They'll continue for hundreds of generations. So this is the kind of problem that we have an opportunity to deal with now, and we probably can do it in part through a lot of steps that we take in our daily lives. Uh, if we don't deal with it now, it would be hard to go back and catch up later. And one of the good things about a system like this is that we don't have to see 30 or 40 percent changes in consumer behavior to make tremendous differences. Uh, households make up roughly a third of all, maybe more than a third of all carbon emissions in the U.S. and around the world. So f quite small changes in consumer behavior can make very big changes in carbon emissions. One study we did two years ago suggested that if people just took the simple steps that, that they could make in their lives that wouldn't cost them any more, uh, that wouldn't require regulation and wouldn't require major lifestyle changes, they could reduce the household share of carbon emissions by 20%, and that would be equal to all the carbon emissions of the country of France.